Hey everybody, welcome back uh, to part 27 of the Trumpeter Bismarck build, the 1200 scale kit. Uh, I'm sorry about missing the premiere last week, I was pretty ill for 7-10 uh, days, something like that, and I didn't do any work uh, in the shed at all. In fact, this is my first day back at the bench. Uh, and because I'm uh, on my first day back, I'm just going to be doing some fairly simple work on the kit this week. And fortunately, uh, what I can be doing, uh, just to get myself back into things, is to build this secondary armament. Which actually, on the Bismarck, isn't too big a deal really. There are six turrets to build, uh, but there's not a lot of photo etch to them. We've got some brass barrels to fit and some blast bags. So, as I said, I'm going to ease myself in gently and uh, we'll get over to the bench now and make a start on those parts. Okay, so this uh, is the section of the trumpeter instructions that we're interested in, section 58. And this is all there is to it. We've just got the six turrets to build up. Uh, there are two different types uh, in the ship. Uh, the one with the range finders uh, on the side. There's two of those. Uh, one either side and the ones without the range finders here at the uh, right hand side. So we just have to be careful uh, when we go over to the Pontos instructions to identify which uh, turret is which or which mountain is which uh, and make sure we get the photo etch right. Uh, but the first job, let's get them cut out, uh, do any assembly that we can and we'll see then uh, when we look at the Pontus instructions, see what we've got to do. We get four of these sprues actually because uh, we have the turrets moulded in such a way as that we get one uh, that has the range finders fitted and one without and we need four without so we end up with several spare uh, turrets with the range finders on. That's the way trumpeter generally do these things. We don't need the gun barrels obviously we'll leave those off they are drilled out actually or they are opened out in the trumpeter kit so uh, they'll be perfectly usable they just need quite a bit of cleanup I think to get them looking something like Okay, so that's a full set of parts and these are the spares. So the next job, which is going to be uh, fairly time consuming, so I'll do most of it off camera, is to clean up all the sprue gates, tidy the parts up a bit, ready for assembly. So these parts need a little bit of a clean up before we can think about assembling them. So just work around them until you're happy, get all the uh, sprue gates off. Doesn't matter so much about these, I'm not even sure that we're going to be using these. These are the uh, barrel mounts, uh, but I think with the Pontos solution that I'm going to be using. We don't need these parts, but we'll see. We'll check the Pontos instructions. Okay, so that's all the parts uh, cleaned up, basically cleaned up. We might need to do a little bit more as we come to fit them. And these mountains were the main secondary mountains on the Bismarck, were 150 millimeter caliber, so around about six inches and we had 12 guns all together, six per side in three twin turrets. 
there were two styles of turret, one with a six and a half metre range finder, that's these ones and the range finders fit on the side like that and the other two on each side were just these plain uh, mountings. This was a C-34 twin turret and the guns were designated C-28. Now in the Kriegsmarine these weapons were designed as fairly rapid firing weapons and were designed really for engaging smaller vessels like destroyers and light cruisers, things like that, at a fairly close range. They wouldn't do much damage obviously at longer ranges that uh, the Bismarck was fighting at uh, in the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Uh, but the disadvantage of them was that they weren't high angle mounting so they couldn't be used for anti-aircraft uh, defence unlike in the US Navy and Royal Navy where generally the secondary armament was dual purpose so the ones that are built for the hood for example they were only four and a half inch calibre but they were high angle and could be used uh, for anti-aircraft defence these were obviously a heavier gun uh, for a more single purpose. And I think the feeling generally is that the US Navy and the Royal Navy got it right. And uh, when you think of the fate of the Tirpitz uh, being bombed by the uh, Lancasters, it might have been useful to have some heavy calibre or slightly heavy calibre uh, anti-aircraft weapons. The uh, next calibre down for anti-aircraft defence on the Bismarck was the, I think there were 105mm mountains, which I built earlier on, this year, earlier on in the series, uh, but I've not fitted them to the ship yet. So uh, with that, let's have a look at the Pontos parts that we need uh, and see what we've got to do to get these together. Okay, so what we have in the Pontos set are the brass barrels and the mountings for them as well, which are these parts. So they will replace the plastic trumpeter pieces here, but we're still going to need the mountings, which are these parts. And then we also have these resin blast bags and the peculiarity with these is that the barrels are full length and they have to go through the blast bag which is very unusual really. I thought Pontos would supply these as an option uh, with a shortened barrel just to glue onto the end of the blast bag. But you don't, you only get this full length type which has to go all the way through. So that means that we're going to have to drill out that resin very carefully to allow us to put the barrel all the way through it. Uh, which is a bit of a pain really. I would have rather the uh, Pontos give us the shortened barrel. Uh, the other option I suppose is you could saw these uh, brass barrels off. I'll try to build these as Pontos intended us to uh, by just drilling out the blast bag and see if we can get that to work. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do is just test that I can accurately drill through these blast bags and see what they look like uh, actually on the mounting. So the barrel at the point where the blast bag sits, which is here just on this uh, break in the barrel, is 1.6 millimetres. So I want to be drilling out the blast bag to that width. So this is a 1.6 mil drill. 
Now there's a long way to go here through this bag. The pilot hole if you like is only perhaps three millimeters deep so we've got to go all that distance and try to keep the drill central otherwise the guns are going to go all over the place. This isn't really an elegant solution from Pontos. I would have preferred to have some shortened barrel stubs with some pins in that I could just uh, push into a hole at the end of the blast bag. So uh, before going through with the 1.6 drill I'm just going to put a pilot hole all the way through. This is a 0.6 Okay, let me show you how Pontos want us to put these guns together. They provide us with these two brass axes with the holes for the barrels drilled in. They join together to form a single axis which using the trumpeter uprights goes into the uh, base of the turret. and then the barrels go into the holes in the brass axes like that and they are independent of each other so if you didn't want to use the blast bags or if you were clever and created your own blast bags um, you could have those at different angles if you wanted to so a bare gun would look something like that which is an improvement on the trumpeter to start with. The difficulty comes if you want to fit these blast bags which I do because the blast bag has to go in and by this stage it's getting quite tight a fit because I've drilled this out to the uh, diameter of the barrel and it just goes in but it's not a particularly good fit and that's because the uh, angle of the gun is set by the axes inside so there'll be a bit of filling to do around there so what I'm going to do is ignore all this gear inside get the uh, barrel to the correct depth into the blast bag and I can do that just by checking against a clean barrel so that's what the gun should look like with its blast bag fitted and then I'm just going to glue the blast bag into the aperture in the front of the mounting making sure that it's at the correct position and it's much easier to get that correct positioning of the blast bag uh, without all the li limitations of the axes and mountings inside so they'll just be like that so uh, I think that's just a much cleaner solution so what I'll do now is drill out all the rest of the blast bags obviously I've got another 11 of these to do unfortunately I'll do one or two on camera uh, but the rest I'll do off and then we can come to start to uh, prepare the actual shields. We've got some uh, ladders to fit on the back and on the sides of some of these and once we've done that we'll be able to put the thing together. Uh, now because I'm working with resin cutting and drilling 
I'm going to have to go to voiceover if I need to say anything. I guess I'm going to have to be wearing my uh, full respirator mask to do this next piece of work. because we don't have all the uh, fuss of the mountings on the inside these bottom plates can just be fitted in position at this stage Now these two mountains have the six and a half meter range finders on. The uh, slight problem with the fit of these is that with these mounting pegs on the side it pushes the range finder forward a little bit too much so it's not in line with this step in the turret roof and it needs to be, that should be a continuous straight line along the front there. But it's a really simple fix because all we need to do is cut off, I've taken about half a millimetre off of that peg and that allows the rangefinder cover to sit just that little bit further back, just enough to have that straight line here at this point so no step I've already done this side So those are the six turrets, got all the uh, guns in their blast bags but the next step for these is to add some photo etch. Now each one has a set of ladder rungs uh, going up onto the roof so uh, that's the first job that we need to do. Okay so you've seen these before, these are the templates for the ladder rungs on the various structures and bulkheads. We need this one here for this turret because the uh, ladder rungs run up the aft side of it. 
So I'm using um, a nice new sharp curved blade just to scrape off the detail from the trumpeter moulding. That's the detail of the rungs that we're replacing here. And I'll just finish that off with the fiberglass pen. That just eases off any little scars. It's a nice smooth finish. And now I've got to drill out the holes down the aft side of the mounting ready for the ladder rungs. Now I've got a bit of a problem here because the 0.3mm drill that I used in the chuck for this first uh, turret it's a bit blunt and what it's done is it burns the plastic and it opens the hole a little bit more than you want it to. Uh, and these ladder rungs are very fine so they don't really cover any mistakes up. So rather than persevere with the 0.3 drill, and I don't have any replacements, I'm going to have to order some more tonight. Uh, rather than that I'm going to use uh, a pin vise to make the holes. And because the ladder rungs are so shallow, uh, the location points for them are so shallow, a pinhole is sufficient. I've tried it with uh, this upper rung on the roof of this uh, first mounting and it gives a much neater result actually than trying to drill it out. So uh, let's have a go and see if we can do the whole thing with that. So I'm just getting the Pontos template in position with some clear tape. Make sure it's nice and square. <laughs> and I'll just mark the rung holes gently with the needle. I can sort the depths out once the template's off. I just want to make the mark at the minute. It doesn't really matter what depth these are because the pin on the ladder rung is so shallow that you just need that sort of amount of pressure to make a hole big enough. The other thing that I like about this method is that it gives a slight uh, ridge around the hole which gives the appearance of a weld actually so as I said I'll probably use this method again. I've broken so many 0.3 drills on this kit through these ladder rungs are all over the place and uh, I've got through probably a dozen on this kit. So I'll cut the rungs out, you can see how many there are, I've used probably hundreds already. Still quite a few left. So I'll get them off and we'll get them fitted. And to attach these I'm using some thick CA. The thick CA plugs any excess hole you've got there. Straighten these up once we've got them all fitted, it doesn't matter, you don't need to fiddle around with them at the moment.
I just removed this one because it wasn't sitting quite right so I've just taken it off and just opened the hole up a little bit and that's done the trick it's sitting level with the rest now so uh, <coughs> I'm glad that the fact that I've run out of 0.3 drills has driven me to look at that that's a much better much neater finish on uh, those ladder rungs I'll use that in future now the lower rung on here is more of a ladder which extends below the level of the turret it has a couple of very small tabs at the top which will locate into the holes that we've got so um, sometimes some bad luck leads you down different avenues and uh, certainly the case here I've not really thought of using a pin vise for making the holes for these but I will in future it's a much neater way of going about it you can't see the location holes for any of those rungs but uh, it's very difficult to achieve that with a drill On to these uh, turrets now and we don't have any ladders to remove from the Pontos moulding because they didn't provide them which is good uh, so all we have to do with this is to use this template to drill out the new holes or pin out the new holes now these uh, are handed we have obviously part and starboard and the rungs are on one side or another so we need two of each with this we need two with this template and two with the mirror image template so uh, you get the idea I'll uh, crack on with these last three and we've got a bit of photo etch to go around the bases of each of these mountains and then I'll get the uh, barrels fitted okay nearly done with these I've just got to do uh, the two turrets where uh, I have to basically create a mirror image of this ladder rung arrangement here so on these uh, left hand sides so I just end up with two pairs uh, set up as a mirror image. So I'll get on with those, do them in the same method as the others using the pin vise. Uh, then we'll come back and I'll see if I can get the uh, barrels fitted together with the blast bags. One thing I have forgotten is some photo etch in the trumpeter kit for some, uh, it's a basically a photo etch ring that goes around with like a ladder uh, effect you'll see it in a moment when I fit it and it's something to do with the uh, top of the barbette possibly in relation to the turning mechanism I'm not so absolutely certain I've looked in the anatomy of the ship and it doesn't identify what it is it shows the feature but it doesn't uh, tell you what it is so we'll get uh, the photo etch from the trumpeter kit the trumpeter photo etch is quite a bit thicker than the Pontos but uh, it's thin enough and works perfectly well so this is the strip that uh, needs to go around it uh, if I hadn't forgotten about them it would have been better to fit them before I put the ladder rungs on but it should be possible to get it fitted without too much trouble 
So what I've done on the first one that I've done off camera is to just tack that into place on the underside where you can't really see it. And it's quite difficult to get started actually, it's such a long piece of photo etch that uh, it tends to want to come off. So once you can get it positioned and just tacked, I've just given that a squirt of accelerator and it will make that uh, connection perfectly solid. So as you can see it's difficult to get that going but once you've got that first step done with a drop of accelerator on it you can gradually just work around you don't need to glue all the way around I just put some little dabs every eight or nine millimeters something like that just enough to be able to pull the strip and round onto the rim of the barbette wait for it to set up for a bit so obviously the trick with something like this is to keep your fingers away from the photo edge that you've just applied and then eventually we come back to where we started and they're actually a perfect length we come back together even though it doesn't really matter this is tucked away underneath the turret so that's uh, quite a nice detail adds a little bit to the look of the turret and uh, I might as well finish this off now by fitting some barrels and what I found with the first one I did was that I needed to select a pair of barrels uh, which had the blast bags at exactly the pos same position. I was quite careful to leave the same amount of barrel exposed on each one but even so there are some very small uh, variations and what you don't want on the same turret is for one barrel to be extended a bit further than the one next to it because it's very obvious so it's uh, good to try to select a pair that are going to work together and to attach them I use some thick CA this gives us a bit of time for adjustment and it also does a little bit of a filling job around the edge of the blast bag. And I'm not going to try and put them on both together because the blast bags are a fairly slack fit in here. The key thing obviously is to have the barrel facing directly forward and because there's no real uh, friction so to speak between the two parts uh, you have to hang around a while before the CA sets. I'm just giving that a blast of accelerator, it was taking ages to go off. But uh, that's fixed it now. So I'll just go through my other barrels now to find one with the exact same length. I'm going to have to do a little bit of filling of these as well. The blast bags aren't a perfect fit and there's little gaps around the edge which will benefit from tidying up. So we want to make sure that they're parallel and in my case I want them at exactly the same elevation uh, which 
is what we've got there. That's one of the completed turrets. So that's uh, all together. I'll do the other four in the same way with the bar bait ring and I'll fit the barrels. Then we'll come back, do that little bit of filling and I can get these primed. Okay, so those are our six turrets built up. Uh, I'll get some photographs of those for the end of the video uh, in this uh, raw state, if you like. I think what I'll do next is to give them a coat of primer. That'll uh, show me where I've got to do the filling a bit easier around the blast bags. And then after that we'll give them a top coat. But let's uh, get that primer on and do a bit of filling after that. Okay, so let's uh, sort these blast bags out now. There are some gaps. After priming I can tell there are some gaps that need to be filled in. But they're only small, so what I'm going to do is use some Mr. Surfacer. This is actually 1500, which is the thin variety, but around the top of the pot you get some congealed material and you can just use that as a filler. And just drop it into the gap like that. And it completely seals the blast bag off. So that gives you a really nice neat finish which when it's dry and painted should look as though the bags are completely attached to the turret which is what they were. And that's what we're looking for, the blast bags sealed off the interior of the turret from the uh, guns outside. Gave the crew a bit of protection. So the painting sequence for these will be to uh, paint the top surfaces in German grey and the barrels. And I'm going to do some minimal masking uh, because of the amount of photo etch I've got on the side here. But I'm going to have to do some sort of masking on them. Uh, very carefully removed obviously. And then I'll hand paint the blast bags in a slightly contrasting canvas looking colour. I'll start with the German grey and I'll come back when we're ready to paint the blast bags. Okay so these turrets are where I want them to be really now. I've been backwards and forwards with the German grey and the sky grey. Uh, I've tried to minimise the masking obviously because I didn't want to be pulling all this uh, photo etch off. Uh, so it does involve you uh, swapping colours quite a bit uh, unless you happen to get it to perfect first time which I didn't so I've had to uh, do a bit of work with those. But they've come out okay in the end and now all I've got to do with these before I fit them is to paint the blast bags. Now I want a contrasting colour to the sky grey with a little bit of tan in it. These blast bags were canvas and I'm going to be using medium grey XF20 which has just got that hint of a mushroom colour to it. So uh, it's not known exactly what colour the blast bags were but I just wanted a slight contrast so that you can tell that at least they're a different material to the uh, steel of the barrels and the turrets.
I really like that colour. XF20 for those blast bags. I'd certainly use them again, I think. Okay, so that's the uh, turrets all done, the secondary turrets. And uh, I need to get those fitted to the ship really because I keep on knocking these ladders at the back. And uh, sooner or later I'm going to break them off altogether. So the safest place for these is on the ship. I'll go pop them on and uh, then I can get some photographs ready for the end of the video, show you what they look like. Okay, so uh, these turrets are just a drop fit into the barbettes in the trumpeter kit. The only thing I've done is just to ease the hole in the barbette, just to allow them to drop in a little bit easier. Some of them were a little bit tight. And when you've done all the photo etch work, uh, as I've done this week on these turrets, you don't want to be forcing them and getting them jammed. Uh, because trying to pull them out, if you do get them jammed, you risk damaging uh, other work that you've done on the superstructure around the turret. But uh, they've gone in fine, happy with those. I'll get some photographs uh, of them installed on the ship. Uh, and next time, hopefully, I'll move on to some of the main armament. We'll see how we can get on with those uh, in part 28. So uh, until then, everybody, look after yourselves, stay safe. And I'll see you in another few days' time. Bye for now.